so hello and welcome back to the new video of the jvino tutorial series so today in this video we'll be talking about the best practices that you can follow or the trick tips and tricks that you can follow to write your test cases while using the JUnit. Okay, so no doubt writing a good JUnit test cases is a rare skill, just like writing a good code, right? So a good code, a well thought and well written JUnit test case can prevent the several production issues during the initial development or the later main maintenance in the Java application. Okay, so it can also reduce your cost of development as well. So okay, so in this video, we'll be talking about the best practices. So let's get started. So our bus very first uh, best practices is always test core methods okay uh, what it means it it's not practically possible to get 100 percent code coverage so you so you don't aim to write the unit tests for each method and tribal operation instead write you uni, yeah, write unit test cases for, for a method that is likely to have bugs during the maintenance right right so always test core methods and core classes which are used heavily by different parts of their program okay so just don't go for testing all of your methods that you are written inside your code just uh, just taste the core methods that that we, you are using uh, always or uh, more number of times uh, so that uh, you can get a good uh, system that you are trying to build okay so second one is uh, run the JUnit test case as a part of build process okay so you should uh, integrate the JUnit tests with your build script so that uh, with every compile your test runs automatically like Maven, ANT are the two most popular build technologies for the Java application provides a support for the JUnit tests right so uh, if you watch our previous uh, tutorial series for JUnit so there also we are using Maven right so here you can see we have pom.xml file where we, are, where we are adding our dependencies so the build tools like Maven and ANT are the good uh, that we can use uh, so that every time our build get executed that time our test cases are also getting executed right so this is a very good practice uh, third one is always test for boundary conditions okay so develop the test cases based on uses and the boundary conditions this this is my favorite uh, JUnit practice as well uh, because most uh, mostly asked as an interview question also on JUnit as well for example if you if we have asked to write a function to replace all the occurrences of the character from a string right so uh, this is our uh, example so how we will how will you write a test case for that okay to my surprise many java programs start up focusing on the junit uh, test syntax like setup and tear down okay so even before thinking of actual test case scenario like testing for an empty text or an empty character in that string test for a character which is not a string inside the string okay so these are just a few test cases that i can think of but the idea is to focus on what to test right so and how to test most id like eclipse and netbeans uh, will take care of that and uh, intellij idea is also uh, taking care of that uh, that one as well okay so the next is align test with business requirements okay so make sure your JUnit test is aligned to your business requirement specified in the brd or the business requirement document okay so always try to write your test cases uh, with according to your uh, brd that is business requirement document because ultimate goal is to reach that requirement and build a product product that will gain you more uh, 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 income house source from that uh, project right so test for non-functional requirements okay so write a test a test for a non-functional requirement as well while writing a thread safe class okay it's important to write the test that try to bake the thread safety okay so test for ordering okay if a function uh, I will give you an example if a function or a method depends on upon the order of events then make sure your JUnit test covers ordering requirement and may take uh, and my take is to test both side of the coin means with the correct ordering method should produce a correct reader correct result and with the incorrect ordering it should throw an exception because uh, like suppose we have two uh, two methods one and two method uh, second method first and second method and uh, for the execution of the second method the first method uh, need to be get executed right so uh, what we can do is we we can uh, 
consider two scenarios where first scenario where our first method will get executed first and then second method will execute it sec uh, secondly okay so this will uh, give us a uh, true uh, feedback or the test cases will get passed but in the second scenario uh, we will uh, try to run the second method first and then we will run the first method and but uh, but here it should throw an exception uh, telling that uh, the first method should get uh, executed first then and then only the second method will be executed so this is how we, uh, you can test for the ordering and the last one is ignore use at ignore annotations okay one uh, one idea which helps me uh, uh, while writing a unit test is to create a dummy test while working with the requirement because that's the best time you remember requirements have had having a test case with a comment that describe a uh, intent of the test lets you to implement it later or just put at ignore if you don't have time to implement the test and using JUnit4 annotation, you can do that uh, by using the at ignore annotation. So this is also a great uh, best practices that you can follow while writing your JUnit test cases. Okay, so these are some uh, best practices that you can follow while writing your JUnit test cases. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.